there's no bigger topic out there than climate change. It's, it's the big disruptor and not enough people in the small scale farming movement are talking about climate change and the impact that it has on the future of food. And it's really something that I'm really mindful about because more and more I'm, I'm invited to go to these UN conferences and these high level speaking engagements where I hear so many things uh, about climate change. And like, just so you know, like out there, there's a whole narrative about robots, technology, hydroponics, like anything else than, than human scale farming, small scale farming. Small scale farming is not part of the discussion of anything related to climate smart farming. Well, that's really too bad. And I can tell you this, like for me, like in these, you know, I've been farming for more than 20 years organically. And I've seen for myself uh, the changes in our, in our farming practices. And we've had to adapt to different scenarios. Like one of the things that is very different from when I started is our harvest hours. Like we start way earlier than before to harvest a lot of our, especially our leafy greens, salads, uh, mescaline mix, or, you know, bunched radishes, everything that, have, that has leafy greens, we har especially in the summer, like we harvest two hours earlier. Uh, like we'll wake up and start the harvest at 6.30, seven max. And by 10, really, it's, if you're harvesting greens by 10 o'clock, it's, it's kind of it's deadish in the field. There's too much field heat accumulated. And so over the years, we've had to adjust uh, our schedule and our working crews so that everyone's on board with that. But it's now, it's like when June kicks in, from June to all, all the way to September, like our harvest hours are way earlier than before. The field heat is getting intense. And that's one area where we've, we've really had to adapt and, and cope. Another one, uh, it's a biggie, and I think a lot of people, all the growers down south will relate to that. Um, you know, we're not yet farming with a uh, shade cloth, but it, we might. But we've definitely needed to adapt a lot of the cultivars that we buy uh, and that we get <clears throat> for summer field heat. So from June, again, from June to September, it, it used to be like we'd had a few days of, of, of dog days of heat, but now it's like weeks and weeks and weeks on. So we're getting more cultivars that are heat tolerant for these crops that we're planting in the summer, like from all the families, you know. So we're definitely sorting through catalogs a lot more. We're interested in seed companies that have heat tolerant crops and we're, it's really making a big difference. From some crops, it's so hot that they just, they're all, they're kind of deadish in the field in July and in August. And so we're adapting our planting calendars and we've definitely adopted a lot of heat tolerant crops. And so I'm inviting everyone to check out the seed catalogs. Some of them now, they have sections on, on, on cultivars that are more heat tolerant. And you know, because we grow year round, we do the same for the winter where we have crops that are more cold tolerant. So selecting the cultivars, that's, that's another biggie. But obviously, and Chris, you know this because you've, you've been to my farm, the number one thing that has changed is water usage. It's just been, we use so much more water than before on the farm. Um, when I started market gardening in early 2000, like most organic growers that I knew didn't even have an irrigation system. We, you know, and so just having one was epic for when we needed it. And we had a pond that was a smaller size. Then some years later, we had to dig it another time to make it twice the size. And then la two years ago, we dug it a third time because it was dry. The pond was completely dry and that was in July. And so we still had so many more months to go on. And so we dug the pond three times. Uh, we did an amazing video about this. You can check that video out. 
Uh, it's on YouTube. It, it, it's really sad in a way, but it's really the story of where we're at. You know, using water uh, in the fields the right way with the right sprinkler system, but just having enough supply of the water is, is definitely a challenge. And I really believe that moving forward, young growers or people starting in farming, they'll have to collect the rainfall to store it, manage their water so much better than what we had to do, you know, since the last 20 years. And so these are examples, but man, there's a lot of us that are on the front line of climate change in our farms. And unfortunately, it's a, it's a topic that we rarely talk about and we should be coming together as a community in the small scale farming world more to talk about climate change and how it's impacting our farms. And most importantly, what kind of solutions are we, <clears throat> are we developing to better cope with it? And that's, that, that's the reason, Chris, why we're doing this, this workshop, Farming in the Age of Climate Change. Uh, the Market Gardener Institute and I were hosting this workshop. We're inviting everyone to really come down, listen to it, learn from people, learn from experience. You know, we're inviting everyone to connect. It's free, it's online, you just need to subscribe to it. But farming in the age of climate change, that's where this discussion needs to be. And we need to be present in the climate smart farming. I, I do feel that we are the number one solution out there. And we're not discussed, nobody's discussing about what role that we could be playing. But, but to answer you, Chris, like the role that we could be playing is that we are already kind of set up to, to mitigate a lot of the problems with the variation and fluctuation of climate change. So we have diversity on the farm, we have biodiversity built into the system. You see it's everywhere. Uh, you know, there's ecological niches everywhere. There's birdhouses. It's like, this is how farms, if you're thinking about feeding the world or feeding, you know, the, the system, farms are not like these at all. Farms are like open fields of, 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 of soil that's not covered. And just like monocultures, it's like, it's, it's not like this at all. So we're already kind of a template. We grow all these different crops. And so just having that diversity of crops, you know, uh, you know, uh, milder weather is good for certain crops, hotter weather, cer cro certain crops will benefit from it. Less rain, more rain. You know, the fact that we have this whole range of crops makes us more resilient. And I do think the idea of scale, because we're smaller and we can adapt better, we can put row covers to protect against a late frost. It's possible to do that on an acre, on two acres, on three acres. It's not possible to do that on a hundred acres. Setting up an irrigation system to make sure that we have water everywhere. Doing that on an acre, on two acres, easy. Doing that on a thousand acres of a monoculture crop, it's, it's just like, it's a lot of work, it's a big setup, and it's just like poor water, poor usage of the water. And so the scale aspect, I think, also comes into play. But I don't want to spoil this, but Chris, to answer you, like, I think it's that we're everywhere. We're a tapestry. And that's where the resiliency really lies, is that small scale farms are the future of farming because we have the capacity to be everywhere in each different territories, feeding every community. And that is what resiliency is all about. And unfortunately, nobody's kind of understanding this or talking about it. And again, like perhaps you and I, because you know, this is our life, we, we know this, but when I'm sitting on those, UMIT, on those UN summits and, and, and these investors that are talking about climate smart farming, like, Scaling small scale farming is not part of the conversation and it should be, and it should be.